Hi everyone and welcome to this webinar, Remove the Complexity of work Workflow Management. I'm Diogo Lopes from Data Links and I'm responsible for Flow Forward product in Portugal. Following Data Links global strategy in terms of business process management, we have started this partnership with Flowforma, a business process enablement tool that can help you save time when implementing complex workflows in a SharePoint environment simply by removing the complexity in this process. Just for your knowledge, we have been working with SharePoint since 2007 and more recently with Office 365 in design and development projects, project support and security testing. With this, we were able to create a center of competencies in Portugal, providing services all around the world with other data link offices. To help you understand in more depth what Flowform is and how we can help you to remove complexity in workflow management, I would like to drive your attention to Paul Stone, Solution Architect from Flowforma. Hi, Paul. Hi, Diogo. Thanks very much. Yeah, my name is Paul Stone and my, I'm a solution architect working um, for the Flowforma company and I'm an expert in the Flowforma uh, workflow product. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you a lot about that and giving you a demonstration of the product. Um, the agenda is going to be a little bit about Flowforma background, what Flowforma is, then a demonstration, how we typically deliver Flowforma uh, as it's delivered in a little bit of a different manner to typical um, bespoke uh, system development. Uh, a little bit about the architecture and the flow form a roadmap as a product on a constant development and then a little bit of information about the pricing model and then finally some question and answers at the end. So I'm going to kick off straight away with a little bit on the flow form background. Essentially flow form is a business process enablement tool. It's designed for ease of use by both end users participating in the process and the business consultants defining the process. Flow form is ease of use interface drives adoption of automated workflow within the business. In addition, Flowforma can be configured quickly, allowing prototypes to be deployed quickly by those close to the business. You don't need to use the technical team to build your solutions. Consultants and analysts can construct complex solutions without the need for program code using SharePoint as a content management platform, integrating with existing SharePoint content and external systems also. All information captured during the workflow is available for reporting, including the progress of workflow against estimated timelines, timelines, so you can view the progress of all the processes in the organization. Flowforma is a mature product and originally released over three years ago as an on-premise solution and now supports SharePoint Online and mobile device apps also. Flowforma's constant development to align with advancing technology coupled with this innovative approach to forms of workflow contributed to, to it winning Best Office 365 add-in at the European SharePoint Conference. The best way to understand Flowforma is to see it. I'm going to show you a simple workflow to illustrate the key concepts of Flowforma and how workflows are built. I just need to switch over to my browser. Just hang on one second. Oops. There we go. <laughs> so Flowforma installs as a SharePoint solution either on premise in 2010 or 2013 or else in Office 365 and it installs with a site template. Now, uh, hopefully the, col the um, colors on this webinar will be uh, familiar with SharePoint, but if you're not, uh, there's not a great deal of a problem. Essentially, Flowforma uses SharePoint as a data repository. So we create a SharePoint site and all the workflows and all the documents and all the data associated with those workflows is saved in that SharePoint site and it's available via the SharePoint site for reporting. When the site installs, it looks something similar to this. Uh, this is a standard SharePoint site with a couple of web parts in it. Um, and essentially, these are showing you processes that you've created and processes that are currently awaiting your input. input. Now, a couple of terms that you need to understand when talking about Flowforma is first a flow, a flow is a workflow template that includes all the interactions associated with that, that workflow. By that I mean the communications, the data elements that are captured, all the documents that are generated or uploaded uh, are stored in a template called a flow. 
an instance of a flow, an instance of a workflow, is called a form. A form in flow former terms is a very dynamic electronic form that incorporates all of the data capture and document management and workflow in one single unit. Flowforma is very much an all-in-one solution and it covers off workflow and data capture and document management in one thing. But the best way to understand that is to see what a form looks like. And the first thing I'd like to do is show you the end user view of the system. Um, to do so, I'm going to create a new form. So I'm creating a new instance of a workflow. And the wor workflow I'm going to use is a leave request. It's a very simple workflow, but it'll show you the key elements of um, the former from an end user perspective. Firstly, we see a header area at the top of the form. In this case, it's a blank area. And with this can include logos and branding and so on, um, that very easily um, according to your organizational requirements. The area below then is called a step bar. And these sh this shows you a visual representat representation of the steps in the workflow. In this workflow, we have three steps. It's very simple. We have employee leave requests when the person requests the leave. It then goes to manager approval and then on to HR for further approval. Now this step bar, as I say, is dynamic and it shows you the current step that's active in the workflow, which is the employee leave request. As we move through the workflow, the different steps will become highlighted and active. Those steps are, are dynamic also where new steps can be included or our steps can be removed from the workflow based on conditional actions, but business rules. Now I'm going to show you how they're built later on. But essentially, the key thing you need to understand is that the step bar is dynamic. It gives you an idea of where you are in the workflow right now. And it shows you which task is currently active in the workflow. Now, if that task is assigned to you, then you'll be able to see all the data elements that are captured for that particular task. So here we have an employee leave request. And to comp complete this task, I need to enter in these details below. The first one is employee, and I'm going to look up an employee. The system will go away and retrieve all the employees and allow me to select one and then pull the employee information back into the, um, the screen. So if I go down here and select Paul Stone, what happens is the system goes away, retrieves Paul Stone's manager details and department details, etc., and their annual leave entitlement and populates them on the screen in some read only questions. We then see the rest of the information below that's required for a to complete a leave request. So we have annual leave year, leave start date, and leave end date, and so on. And then the number of days that we're requesting, I'm going to ask for two. And then the system automatically calculates that I'll have 17 days remaining after this point. The key thing I wanted to say about this is that, first of all, the screen is dynamic based on information that you enter business rules fire in the background and carry out actions. In this case, to display some additional questions and retrieve some data. Also, many different data types are supported. Here we have numbers, lookups, and questions, uh, sorry, dates, and lots of different data types. All of this information can be validated as it's entered to ensure the best quality of information is captured at this point and passed on to the next step in the workflow. Once I've finished entering the information, I press the Submit button below to submit that information forward to the next step in the workflow. Now, under normal circumstances, the form typically closes at this point, and the reason is that the next step in the workflow is normally assigned to a different resource. So all of these steps are assigned to resources. In this case, the manager approval would typically be assigned to the manager that was identified in the first step. However, for this demonstration, I've, I've set myself up as my own manager. <laughs> so therefore, when we go to manager approval, I'm allowed to enter in all the information. And here I can select yes or no. Um, and then down below, I can submit it on. And then it will go for HR approval. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to explain a couple of buttons down below. Uh, the pass back button allows you to loop the workflow back to a previous step. And why might you want to do that? Well. You'll notice on the screen I can't see the actual details of the leave request. All I need to do to see them is to click on the leave request button here, and then I can see the data that was entered by the person who completed the leave request step. I can now choose to approve or reject that. 
if I want to, if I noticed an error on it, for example, I could use the pass back button to pass the workflow back to that previous step. I would enter in which step I want to pass back to, and then a description as to why I want to pass it back. And when I press OK, the person who submitted the information on step one would actually get an email with that uh, explanation in it, and they'd be able to go in and amend those details. We also have a delegate button where we can delegate the, um, the, the piece of work to somebody else in my place. So as a manager, maybe I don't have time to approve this particular request, I'm going to pass it on to my secretary um, to do the work. That's the quick view of an end user view of the system. Um, and I'm now going to show you the actual build view, so the configuration of that. I go over now to my flows list and open up the leave request flow. This is the template for the business process. And here I can see that I have three steps in my business process. Um, I can add another step very easily um, by entering test step and then passing in a demo um, user here and pressing save. And I now have added a new step to the workflow. It's that simple to do. And I can drag that up to the appropriate place in the workflow and it will execute now as a third step in the workflow. Um, on all of the steps, I can open up the step to see all the data that's captured in the step. And here we have, for example, an employee field that we saw earlier on. And when I open up the definition of the employee field, you'll see that it's a lookup question. And down below, you'll see that it looks up at this particular list in the SharePoint uh, site, and it pull back, pulls back the employee name from that list. And there are many different types here. So for example, if I look at leave start date and, and edit that, we'll see that that's a date and time field, a different type of question. And it has, um, different parameters down below. So here I'm showing that only the date. I could, if I wanted to, show the date and time. I could specify a default date value as being today, for example. All of the different field types, and, and there are many different field types, um, have different attributes associated with them. But all of these attributes are set up using a very simple, um, very simple web forms rather than writing any code. So for each different type, if I pick this one, for example, we'll see it's a question type, it's this choice field. And in here, I can enter in the different choice values. Here we have 25, 2016. If I wanted a new value, I can put in a new value here and press save. Um, on the many different data types, very briefly, um, we have a lot of different data types supported, uh, including, for example, a lookup and a file upload, a number or a person or group. We can also put in a repeating table where we're recording a whole table of data. Very useful for in different work, different workflow scenarios, for example, expenses. You might want to record a table of expense details. Um, when all of your fields are set up uh, on all the diff different steps, you can enter in some business rules that carry out actions when data is entered. So in this case, if I select an employee field, I look over to defined rules, you'll see I have two business rules set up on this employee field. So when somebody selects an employee, they will be able, this, this business rule will far, will far, which will show these questions. So you may remember when I selected an employee, it showed some questions on the screen and then populated those questions from a list. Here we're showing the questions. Um, and to do that, if I wanted to show an additional question, I simply select a new question here. And I can choose to show or hide that. Um, I could also enter in a condition that says if, for example, the employee name was Paul Stone, then I want to execute this business rule. So here we now, it will execute this rule condition. If the employee equals Paul Stone, it will show all those fields. Now, I'm not going to save that rule, of course, because it will break my workflow. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, close that without saving it. Another business rule then is to get list data. So this is getting information from a list. And again, it follows a very similar format. It's very much point and click, again, no code involved, where I can enter in some conditions. And if those conditions are true, an action is executed. In this case, the action is to get information from a list. So I point to the list that I want to look up. And then I simply select the information that I want to pull out of that list. 
So here I'm using some filtering. I'm saying, okay, I want to pull the division. I want to pull the reporting to. Here are all the list columns. And I'm simply mapping those onto questions that appear on the screen. So rule definition is very straightforward and many different rule types are supported. There's not enough time today to go through every one, but just to show you, the, give you an understanding of the breadth of the rules that are available. And we have a rule to step assign, which is to dynamically assign resources to different tasks in the workflow. And we then have rules for data integration to get list data from uh, lists within SharePoint um, to update those lists or to indeed kick off an entirely different um, sub process. Um, I could create a new form, remembering that a form is a process in for former terms. And I could create that form in a current site or in an additional sub-site. So for example, I could have a HR site where I have an employee onboarding process. And at a certain point in that process, um, you need to instruct finance to set the new employee up on payroll. I could create a process in a finance site and launch the process from the onboarding process in the HR site. So HR will kick off the process, complete the onboarding um, process to a certain stage, and then that would automatically launch a process in the finance site for them to uh, set up the employee on payroll. And the different processes know about each other and can communicate with each other. So as the finance process completes, it can update the main process in the HR site. We can also fire off many communications rules. And the two key ones are to send an email. So we can send an email from the system using a ser series, a system of templates to control the body text in that email. And the information that you capture in the form, all the questions over here, can be included in that email. And the email can be sent to people inside the organization and externally also if you need to. And the email can also include attachments. Um, we can also generate a document. So we use a system of templates where you define a document template in Microsoft Word. And we've built a, a plugin for Microsoft Word that allows you to quickly um, pull in information from the flow um, into a Word-based document. And then a generate document email, so ge generate document business rule. We'll generate that document as part of this workflow and attach it to one of the steps. You can then, it can then be converted to a PDF automatically and it will appear as a link within the step. So you can just go in to, to the form, click on the link and it will automatically open your PDF document. A little bit about, very briefly, a little bit about the generate document, the templates involved there. Um, I'd like to show you what a template would look, looks like. So if I just click over here to my Word. Here's an example of one of those templates where it's an accident summary report for an instant, instant reporting workflow. And essentially, this is Microsoft Word, um, and we've installed our Flowforma plugin, which you can see here. And when you select that, you can turn on the panel on the right. And what the panel does, it lets you view all the details within this particular workflow. So in this workflow, I have several steps. And then with each step, I have questions. And I can simply place the cursor inside the Word document and insert a, uh, an answer, for example, for a person's age. And then that will automatically be generated and included in the document when it's generated from the, uh, the workflow. So it's, it works a little bit like um, the old mail merge kind of functionality where you're merging in the data from the form into a, a Word document automatically. Now, once you've saved those um, changes, uh, they are applied automatically to the site that you're working in. So the next time that the workflow is executed, it will include this additional step, for example, and it will include any new business rules that I in incorporate. And for the moment, I'm going to close this without saving any changes. And talk a little bit about um, a thing called activity monitoring. So when we set up the workflow uh, using the flow designer tool that I just showed you, we can specify estimated durations for the workflow, the entire workflow itself. So for example, for the entire leave request should take 10 days. And also for each individual step within the workflow. So we can say that the request should take two days, the manager should approve it within one day. And then we can look at the performance of the workflow against those estimations. So I'm talking about the performance of each individual instance of the workflow against a standard uh, set of durations. 
I were to click on the activity monitoring button below, <laughs> you'll see that I see a view here of all the uh, active workflows in the system. Now in this particular demonstration site, we have many different um, workflows that I've worked on um, which are uh, not so relevant. But down here we'll see the lead request workflow that I just showed you. And that shows me that I have three uh, lead requests that are performing on schedule and a lot of other lead requests, 17, that are not. Now in this demonstration system, and this is not real data, hence, uh, hence that's why we have such a large, large number of underperforming lead request forms. <laughs> If I were to click on the uh, bar on, on the, um, the three leave requests, um, I can see the three leave requests below, and I can go into the detail of those and, and see, the, see how they're working. Or more likely, I would click on the red bar here and see the 17 leave requests that are not performing. I can then go into those leave requests and identify, is there any common commonality between the leave requests as to why? those requests are not performing, so it may be a specific resource. For example, the system account seems to be not working too well. <laughs> or it may be um, maybe that the, the workflow, the design perspective is not right. So in other words, for example, um, a step is assigned to one resource when really it should be assigned to somebody else. Um, so this tool gives me a, a view of those workflows in the system that's live, that's current, that shows me um, what workflows are performing to schedule and which ones are not. And um, this is another view called the historical uh, uh, activity view, um, where when I click on those um, delayed leave requests, I actually see, the, see a breakdown of all the different steps within the workflow. And I can see, oh, the leave request manager approval, that's clearly the step that's causing the problem because we have half of the, the steps are delayed. Therefore, I can click on those delayed steps and I can again view the forms that um, are causing the delay, go into each form, look at the detail inside the form and identify why that bottleneck is occurring in the process. Now all of this information that you see is also available through a standard reporting feed that we provide that can be consumed within something like Power BI. So you can build basically your own dashboards that um, reflect the information captured in the system right now. Now, if I just jump back here, excuse me, to my presentation. So just to cover off what we've, what we've discussed, we've talked about the end user experience where we have integrated forms and workflow and um, presented to a single interface that makes the system very easy to use from an end user perspective. They don't need to think about um, looking to ta separate tasks and forms. The forms and the tasks are all within one simple user interface. Configuration and deployment, you've seen it's also very straightforward. We have our flow designer tool that lets you modify the workflows and add steps and add questions very easily, all through a point and click interface with no code. Finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about mobile accessibility. It's quite difficult to show mobile accessibility on, um, on this format, this webinar format, but just a couple of screenshots of our app. We have mobile apps for iOS and for Android, and these mobile apps basically allow people to, uh, to create new forms or uh, complete steps in existing forms while they're out on the go. Um, they can create new forms um, when the system is on, on offline. So even when they don't have connectivity, they can still create a new form. They can still start to complete their steps. And then when they have connecti connectivity later, they can, uh, they can submit the information into the system. The mobile device clients are identical on both platforms. And they're also very similar to the view of the form that you will see um, in the browser version. So essentially we're using the same technology um, to render the form in uh, if you were using Internet Explorer or if you're using a, um, the actual iOS app, for example. So you'll see on the right hand side a uh, visual representation of the form and you'll see that it's very similar to in terms of layout and in terms of function to the uh, browser version. I'd like now to talk about our delivery approach. Flowforma is a very rapid development tool in the sense that it's no code. It can be built by a business consultant. Therefore, you can go in and hold a workshop with end users um, and spend half a day um, 
documenting up that workshop and then go straight into Flowforma and start building the full solution. So you're building a solution in SharePoint. You're building a solution that already has a workflow engine in there. It already has a forms engine in there. There's not a whole lot for you to do from a technical perspective. All you need to do is go into Flow Designer and configure the steps, the tasks, if you like, that you recorded in your workshop and start filling in all the data and then complete all the business rules. It's quite a straightforward process and it's very rapid so that within a few hours you already have something that looks like a finished finished product or finished solution for your users. Therefore, we propose that um, you deliver Flowforma solutions using a prototyping approach. We've come up with a thing called Evolve, which is basically a delivery approach using, using prototypes, where you build a proof of concept initially, and you build that proof of concept very quickly. And within the proof of concept, you define the scope of the project. And you can also establish initial estimates of the duration of the project. You then play that proof of concept back to your end users and then refine it and refine it and refine it until you get to an end point where you have a system that um, users are happy with. Now, the big difference with Flowforma is that system is available for the users to use and work with straight away. So as you're building a new Flowforma, you can grant access to your Flowforma site to your end users, and the end users can start using the system straight away. And if those end users are suitably, suitably trained and qualified, they can actually go in and start making amendments to that system themselves, should you want them to. A little bit now about our architecture and integration. So Flowforma was built as a SharePoint solution. However, it uses its own technology for forms rendering and its own technology for workflow. It's not dependent on SharePoint for, for those elements. So therefore, it um, has its own forms engine, its own workflow engine, and its own document generation services. And these all interact with SharePoint and store information in SharePoint. So all of the data that's captured in a, in a for form, of form is stored in SharePoint. And all of the workflow information is available, um, which is also stored in SharePoint and is available for reporting. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as regards integration with it, other applications, um, you can integrate with third-party external applications via something like SharePoint BCS. Flowforma interacts with lists very well, and as long as you can represent external information on SharePoint lists um, via BCS, for example, then you'll be able to um, manipulate those lists and send information back to the, the whole system. We also interact with SQL Server Store procedures. So if you want to, you can um, store information in a, re in a relational model inside SQL Server and create some store procedures that allow you to push and pull information um, from a flow form of form. And that those, the interaction with the store procedures um, is achieved via a no-code business rule. Okay. The store procedure itself, of course, you have to write in a little bit of code in there. But um, the interaction from a performance perspective is, is all um, no code configuration. Now, some people will turn around and say, well, hey, if you have a no, no code solution, I'm going to hit a problem someday that I'm not going to be able to get around because uh, you, know, you have a no code solution. Therefore, I can't change the way your product works. Actually, that's not the case. We've built Fulforma from the day one to be extensible. So we allow you to build, for example, custom business rules and to interact with web services. So if you had a SAP ERP backend, for example, um, you could interact with SAP web, web services by building custom business rules. And those custom business rules are not built in .NET code, and you do not, not need a SharePoint expert to do this. All you need is some JavaScript knowledge and HTML. Um, and you build your custom business rule that calls the web service using JavaScript. So it's very straightforward um, to build extensions if you need to. Another example of an extension that you could build is a custom question type. So for example, you could display a map in the middle of the form um, by calling the Google Maps web service um, and supplying a geographic location. Again, all of that could be achieved just using JavaScript and HTML. It's quite straightforward. We've built a, an API that um, allows you to um, interact with the Fulforma form very easily. Now, a little bit, of, I'd like to talk a little bit about our roadmap. Fulforma is a product that's under constant development, 
and we constantly are working on um, the next release. <coughs> Now we release um, approximately three times per year, um, but we we move things. Uh, we re review our roadmap every month, so every month we are looking at new features based on market forces, feedback from our partners, feedback from our clients, uh, and we update the roadmap every month. Um, so new features being added all the time, and we are always keeping abreast of current technology and. And, and future directions of technology. Um, we maintain several pillars, however, so that basically we will never take Forma away from these places. So we'll never take, we'll never make Forma uh, a, a slow delivery tool. We'll always be focused on speed of delivery. We see speed of delivery as a key um, selling point of the Forma system, uh, and we have many very happy customers um, who are particularly impressed by how quickly. And we can put for former solutions together. We always support the idea of real-time change. This lines up with our prototyping delivery approach. Basically, when you update a form, you can very quickly deploy that and show people the change um, in practice. And we promote citizen developers. And what does that mean? Well, a citizen developer is a business user or a business analyst or a business consultant, um, not an actual um, traditional developer who is a, a coder. So um, using Fulforma, you don't not need to use need to produce um, systems using code. Um, end users suitably trained could actually um, create and modify Fulforma workflows. And finally, we focus on customer centricity. I mentioned briefly that Fulforma is available in Office 365. Uh, we have a very uh, an increasing number of and clients who use SharePoint Online and Office 365 as a SharePoint solution. And um, we promote the idea of um, allowing customers to come into your workflow. Forforma is a, is a web-based SharePoint solution. And as long as you, your infrastructure supports external entities um, accessing your system, then you can incorporate those, those into your workflow. So for example, in Office 365, if a person has a Microsoft account, you can grant them access to your Office 365 domain. And basically, they can come in and complete a task, for example. So you could have an interaction with a supplier and where the supplier actually completes task number five in the workflow and submits information. And all they need to do that is an internet browser and their, uh, their Microsoft account. And then you just simply need to give them access to the, the uh, end user site. Sorry, to the full form site, excuse me. Um, now, to give you an example of the kind of things that we're looking at in our roadmap, this is just one example. Um, we're looking at uh, introducing a decisioning uh, element into the workflow. Um, by that, I mean simply having a, a voting step in the workflow, whereby typically we have, you'll be familiar with approval steps where, let's say on the leave request, we have a manager approval. Well, let's say in more complex scenarios, an example will be product development, where you need a committee to decide to move something forward or backwards. So in product development, you come up with a concept, and then you review that concept. Typically, a team of people review the concept, have a discussion about it, and ultimately come to a group decision um, as to whether to move forward or not. This typically involves people voting um, yes, we'd rather go forward or somebody else votes no. Um, and to make that decision, you need access to not just the step that you're on right now, which would simply be, okay, do you want to go yes or no? Um, but you also need all the information, the supporting information in, in one simple place. So what we're doing is we're producing a decisioning step that allows you to look at all the re content related to the decision uh, and uh, get involved in the discussion between the decision team members and cast a vote um, to move you forward onto the, the, the next step in the workflow. Um, so it's quite an exciting concept and we're look very much looking forward to seeing that in the next six months. Now I'd just like to talk a little bit about the pricing model. Firstly to say up front that the pricing details, if you need pricing details you can contact Diogo at Datalinks and Diogo will be able to forward on the specific pricing details that would apply to your scenario. But just to talk about how our pricing model works, 
um, we price a Foforma based on user bands. So it's all to do with the number of users that are going to actually use Foforma. Now that does not mean the number of users on your SharePoint site. It means the number of users that are participating in the workflow or using the Foforma functionality. And we apply a price based on a user band, so say 1 to 250 users, 250 to 1,000, etc. Um, you only need to consider users that are access actually use Foforma. So not people who use SharePoint, or not the number of users who access your server. It's people who access Foforma. They're the only users you need to consider. There's no additional charge for administrators. Every, a user is a user, whether they're participating in workflow or creating one. And we have the same price for the product on all SharePoint platforms. So whether it's Office 365 or on-premise, it's the same price. We have one price for the workflow forms and document generation components altogether. So Proforma is a tool that comprises a number of different uh, functional areas, workflow forms and document generation, and they're all included in that price. The price is an annual license cost, so there is an annual recurring cost associated with Proforma. Um, but that annual cost includes upgrade protection, so when we update the product, you automatically get the update. And now I'd like to move on to questions and answers. So if anybody on the call has any questions at this point, maybe they could enter in some details into the chat box. OK, I'm not seeing any questions appear at this point. So what I think I'll do then is progress on and pass you back to Diogo to uh, close the presentation. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, please keep in touch. And in case you have any question or you need some further information, please contact me to, by email to diogo.lopes at datalinks.pt. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.